This year is the hardest year of your whole life. So hard, you cannot see a future most days. The pain is bigger than anything else. It takes up the whole horizon, no matter where you are. You feel unsafe. You feel unsaved. Your past, so present, you can feel your baby teeth. Sitting on the couch, you swear your feet don't reach the floor. You keep remembering the first time you saw a bird's nest held together by an old shoelace and the scraps of a plastic bag. You knew the home of a person could be built like that. A lot of things you'd rather throw away. You keep worrying you're taking up too much space. I wish you'd let yourself be the Milky Way. Remember when I told you I was going to become a full-time poet and you paid my rent for three years? Best friend angel of the get through all living is storm chasing every good heart has lost its roof let all the walls collapse at your feet scream timber when they ask you how you are fine is the suckiest word it is the opposite of here here is the only place left on the map here is where you learn laughter can go extinct and come back i'm already building a museum for every treasure you unearth in the rock bottom holy vulnerable cliff god mason heart heavier than all the bricks say this is what the pain made of you an open 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 road an avalanche of feel it all don't let anyone ever tell you you are too much or it has been too long whatever guards the feet on the bridge of the song you are made of that thing that unbreakable note that photograph of you at five years old, the year you ran away from school because you wanted to go home. You are almost there. You are the same compass you have always been. You are the same friend who never left my side. During my worst year, you caught every tantrum I threw with your bare hands, chucked it back at that blood moon, said it's okay. Everyone's survival looks a little bit like death sometimes. I wrote a poem called Say Yes while I was cursing your name for not letting me go. Best friend, this is what we do. We gather each other up. We say the cup is half yours and half mine. We say alone is the last place you will ever be. We say tonight, let's just stay inside, reading Pema Children while everyone else is out on the town. Pema will say only to the degree that we expose ourselves over and over to annihilation can that which is indestructible in us be found. You'll say, Pema is so wise. I'll say, yeah, she is. And we are too. Angels of the get through. We are too. I'm sitting on my friend's couch, several months into being intentionally single and celibate for the first time since I was 20 years old. 20 years old when I believe sex had to involve a dude and the word screw. I'm telling my friend about this psychic who said, I'm going to meet the love of my life by the end of January. It's January 10th and I am so far from ready for Cupid, that naked little shit to fire anything sharp my way. So far from ready to be the kind of insane only love makes me. My friend musters every bit of new age jargon she can fit onto her tongue and says, what if you are the love of your life? I think, oh my God, I hope that's not true because I am absolutely not my type. But let's say for a moment I am. Let's say I am my dream girlish boy and I am standing on my front step, ringing my own doorbell, waiting for me to answer so I can hand myself a mason jar full of water lilies I have rescued from a millionaire's Monet. Let's say I am so charmed by the radiance of my own anarchy. I invite myself in for tea and when I'm not looking, I sneak the steam from the kettle into my pocket so the next time I am missing the coast of Maine, I can gift myself the fog. Let's say I'm not just running my mouth around an old cliche that says we gotta love ourselves. We don't. I know I can keep getting down on myself till I'm tucked in the grave, looking up at my name carved in stone, wondering why I never knew I'd been cast to the lead in my own life. When it comes to love, the only thing I'm certain of is you are the best thing that has ever happened to you. 
whoever you are. You're a quitter, great, there's plenty worth quitting. A sore loser, who isn't? You've got no discipline, maybe discipline is for bodybuilders and closeted gay monks. Picture a magician, so attached to being perfect. He cuts off his own legs just to pull off the trick. Picture the 738 selfies I deleted. Before I took one, I was willing to show to the world. Picture me wishing I could have all of those back. My so-called flaws in stacks, like baseball cards I know will be worth something someday, like compassion, like tenderness, like my capacity to think myself a catch just because I've never seen a chandelier I didn't want to swing from because I'd maybe go to space just to know if railroad tracks look like zippers from the moon. On days, I have a hard time keeping warm in my own weather. I imagine what the first flower said to the first human, trying to name half its petals love me nots. No, that is not how anything grows. Of all the violence I have known in my life, I have not known violence like the way I have spoken to myself and I've seen almost everyone around me hold that same belt to their own backs and ambush of every way we have decided we are not enough than looking for someone outside of ourselves to come clean that treason up. If I were to ask myself out of that cycle, I might say, listen, I am still going through my growth spurt. I am still yet to get my worst tattoo. I am still clearing the smoke from burning the toast I wrote for my own wedding day. I am still trying to get rid of my mirror face, look myself dead in the eye. I know Facebook is a lousy mortician, desperately trying to make us all look more alive. I know there are things I haven't survived. I know there are people in this world who have had to work really hard to survive me. I don't ever want to take that lightly, but I want the heavy to anchor me brave, to anchor me loving, to anchor me in something that will absolutely hold me to my word. When I tell Cupid, I intend to keep walking out to the tip of his arrow, to bend it back towards myself, to aim for my goodness, till the muscle in my chest tears from the stretch of becoming what I came here to be, a lover of whatever got covered up by the airbrush, the truth of me, that beauty of a beast chewing to the leash, till I get a mason jar full of water lilies, and I got a kettle full of sea, and my whole life, y'all, my whole life is just a boomerang valentine coming right back at me. Another black man has been murdered in our streets, and I am white as a ghost haunting my own grief, thinking who am I to feel grief, thinking my God who am I not to. I'm writing to tell you about 1998, when Matthew Shepard, a young gay man from Laramie, Wyoming, was tied to a fence, beat with the butt end of a pistol till his skull cracked, left for 18 hours in Wyoming's frozen cold, his face entirely covered in blood, except for the places his tears had washed clean. I'm writing to tell you I was in a coffee shop in Seattle holding my love's hand when I heard the news. The grief tsunamied from my eyes immediately down to my knees. I could feel them buckle, each one of them like a Bible belt, snapping around the neck of an 18-hour scream. On the street outside the coffee shop, I could feel my last bit of unburied faith reach for the shovel in the dugout grave of my chest. I could feel my own mother kissing Matthew's forehead in a hospital where she knew even the doctor's God was rooting for a flat line. For weeks, I couldn't look at anyone I loved, anyone I loved, without imagining hate crushing their spines into a powder that would be snorted at a party after a football game. Four months prior, James Bird Jr., a black man from Jasper, Texas, had been chained to the back of a truck, dragged for three miles along the concrete, conscious the entire time till his head was severed and his remains were found in 81 separate places along the side of the road. I'm writing to tell you that I do not remember where I was or how I felt when I heard that news. For a lot of our community, 1998 was the year only Matthew Shepard died. I'm writing to tell you I've been spending a lot of time thinking, who are my people? What determines whose death will storm my chest, will flood my eyes, will make me want to burn down a city and pray with every ounce of my winded grace that more than the smoke will rise? Last year, an older gay man in my neighborhood shot himself in his head in his own bed after his family refused to attend his funeral, refused to collect his belongings. The mattress was hosed off, tossed in the backyard, and his house was foreclosed. 
I heard a rumor that the house was going to sell for an incredible deal. I immediately imagined flocks of straight people going on and on about how his grave would look fabulous with a granite countertop. I kept picturing the holiday party they would throw in the bargain of his unlivable pain, his life, nothing but a stain to them, nothing but something to scrub out of the rug in the new nursery. I had walked by his house for weeks, imagining an SUV full of soccer cleats running back and forth over his ghost in the driveway. I'd been up all night picturing what I would say to whatever thief would have the audacity to rip up his garden and plant Bermuda grass when I finally said to my friend, you know, I've been writing for 16 years and the word gentrification has never made it into a single one of my poems. Who are my people? Where is my rage when they are stealing brown and black people's homes? Last week, someone posted a comment on my Facebook page that said, you're the kind of bitch it would be a pleasure to hang. And that was tucked in between thousands of other comments, equally as fucked, some of them like yours, from people in the queer community who furiously disagreed with a post I wrote about Mike Brown being murdered by a white supremacist system designed to murder the hearts, bodies, and spirits of people of color. Something difficult to stomach in this life is the fact that we might all learn and grow at a pace that will hurt people, but I am writing to tell you I'm furious with my own pace, furious that I could be holding the candlestick of a microphone for this many years and have it burn this far down without shining a hell of a lot more light on the truth of what I know white is. You want to know what white is? White is having somebody tell you you'd be a pleasure to hang, having a whole lot of people agree, and not even thinking to lock your door that night. White is knowing if somebody is going to be hung, you are not the one. White is having all of Eric Garner's air in our lungs tonight. No matter how queer we are, no matter how anything we are, if we are white, we have Eric Garner's air in our lungs tonight, and that means our breath is not ours to hold. That means our exhale is owed, is owed to mercy, to the riot of our unowned hearts, to the promise that who we weep and fight and tear down the sun for will not only be our own faces in the mirror to the knowing that we can never ever be married to apathy without wearing the rings of the fucking poplar tree when our country is still lynching and still calling the hung body shade when our country is right now rolling a red carpet from the blood that pours and people are dying dying for us to notice our footsteps are red our silence is not a plastic gun it is fully loaded it has lethal aim. It is 1998 and James Bird Jr. is not yet dead. He is walking from a party towards his house on the other side of town and you and I are somewhere. We are somewhere pouring what we will pour into the cups of our hearts, spilling what we will spill into the screamed open earth. You were born six years before I was. In those six years and a trillion years before that, I was floating up in space, all light and bliss in orbit. No grief or hurt or bitterness. All poetry and no language. Not a single need for words like forgiveness. I was up there making snow angels in the stardust when I glanced down and saw you on a playground, shy as a comet, chewing on your hair. I turned to the Milky Way and said, I found her. Get me down there. The first time we were face to face, it was a Sunday in New Orleans, holy as you are. I'm pretty certain you were high as a kite, and I wanted to be the key, tied to the end of that string, catching all of your electricity. When I finally got the nerve to kiss you, we were in the Colorado desert, beneath the same night sky you would point to months later and say, baby, we could make any of those specks of light the Big Dipper if we drew the lines right. I suppose it was all that possibility that made us both so bad at actually knowing where to draw the line. Me, running down the street, chasing a taxi, crying at the top of my lungs. I mean, the absolute rooftop of my skyscraper lungs. You, deboarding the airplane with your suitcase still on it, racing back home to find my heart, a burning piano. We were never easy. We never slept like rocks without worrying. We would wake like volcanoes. We could be so explosive. I started thinking a good day was a slow burn. But then we'd start talking about the ocean. And I'd remember how the salt curled your hair. Or how you blushed in the kitchen when that radio show on the stereo started making you cry. I got so desperate to learn how people reached each other. I couldn't stop running around, cursing our city, 
for the day it started burying the telephone wires underground for that crushing first fight when we spent all night trying to gather the wine back into the grape for every promise we broke like bread in hopes of feeding ourselves better the last time i watched you paint your toenails in my bed i remembered the first time i heard someone say half the stars we see in the sky are already dead maybe that's what happened maybe we were already gone before we ever met I get panic attacks when I'm being looked at. I get hungry in crowds. I eat potato chips to crunch away the noise. The noise is not noise if I am the one who is in control of the loud. I'm a lot three years old. You can't see me if I close my eyes. You have no idea where I am. I guarantee I am somewhere thinking about the people who choose the middle seat on an airplane. When our elbows touch, my heart goes so fast. I dare myself to not pull away. It's the point of life. Don't let anyone tell you different. The point of life is increasing the amount of time you can get your elbow to stay. My joy likes to run from my body quick as it can. I've been practicing holding it the way you'd practice holding your breath at a public pool. I can do about half a lap before my panic freaks out on its little red whistle. My panic is not a lifeguard, but you can't tell my panic that. My panic googled how to give CPR to yourself. Despite how it might look, I was raised right. My father is a good man. When I asked him why he stayed 3 years in Vietnam, he told me the army offered him a free trip to France if he stayed the extra year. When he left the room, my mother said, "No, Andrea, that is not true. Your father stayed the extra year so his brother wouldn't have to go." When I came out to my parents, they took me to a psychiatrist to get my head fixed. The psychiatrist said, "I am not responsible for my family's happiness, but my father's brother is a happy man." It was a lot to lose. I never nightmared so much as I did those years. I was at a Catholic school playing basketball for the lady monks. I was taking environmental science from a nun who did not believe in dinosaurs. What I knew about extinction was that my family stopped calling and I started working demolition and volunteered to run the jackhammer through the asbestos tiles on the building's floor. When I finally got my degree, the only job I could find was as a telemarketer selling a product called Score, a loan guaranteed to get any man laid in the club there were times when your life is not on the upswing and no one was saying it was going to get better when they said straight not man they meant straight not but some of us can't help but jackknife out of the net some of us know love is not the only closet we were told never to come out of there is also the closet of grief the closet of sorrow the closet of panic of terror of rage the closet of awe and want and bliss every honest grit that we feel this world asks for a stencil instead for the chatter of cordial manufactured machine and yet here we are daring our elbows out noising the noise for giving the past for not being the past making no excuses for wanting to feel too much there is no tragedy that doesn't knock the wind out of us but we we follow that wind where it goes running with our wind chimes dragon behind us like we were just married to knowing the breakdown is what trampolines the bouncing back call my ring finger whatever i use to flip off the rules of how my feelings are supposed to supposed to supposed to act i am always a groom with a heavy heavy heart just learning to pull my own weight without wishing my past weigh less than it does learning brave is a hand me down suit from terrified as hell dress me in whatever will get me to the door of my heart get my faith in us under your skin Hold my stubborn and the palm of your free. Tell whoever is sitting beside you tonight, thank God you never got braces. 
Your bite looks like a city skyline. I bet you leave that kind of mark on this world. Photoshopping my sister's mugshot. I crop out the trailer and the splintered remains of the front door. I crop out your name all over the news. I crop out the sawed-off shotgun they found hidden in the yard. I crop out the blood-vacant faces of every soul who was sold to. I crop out their family's hunted hearts. I rotate the image till you are upside down, hanging from the monkey bars, hollering, my name, Andrea, look what I can do. I zoom in till there is no lighter beneath the spoon, just ice cream dripping from your lips and me trying to teach you how to blow out the candles the day you turn two years old, your cheeks like pink balloons giggling away gravity. I give more detail to the background. I pose you beside our bloodline, our grandfather throwing his liver through the kitchen window, our grandmother on her knees sweeping up the glass. I zoom in to the pieces she didn't find, I find them in the sole of your shoes on your worst day of junior high. There is a thin line between skewing the truth and giving a panoramic view. I don't know if I am widening the lens or if I am just making an excuse when I say you were a kid the first time you used, when I say you wanted blue hair and a boyfriend, not a conscience that wouldn't have a good vein left, not an abscess in the arm you would one day not hold your family with, not me falling off the wagon of my unforgiveness, running to the police station, begging them to replace your photo with a negative, the dark side in full light, the hungry scream in your body every time you tried to get clean the clinic that told our mother you would die if she didn't send you back to the streets to find the poison to kill the bugs how I'd count your legs when you walked into a room how I still do but how that isn't the right exposure because you were also the kindest person I ever knew and that in itself has been its own dark room Considering the ugliness is to scale. Considering our family tree and how there isn't a person who loves you, who isn't dead on the branch, how loving you less might have been the sweetest gift I could have given my own life, but how that sweetness would have rotted God's teeth when every Christmas morning you woke me at 4 a.m. more excited for me to open my stocking than you were to open yours. How do I say that to a judge and not sound insane? How do I say the truth isn't the right filter? The truth knows nothing of who you almost were. But I do. I do. I just click a button. I undo one tiny thing. And there you are. What do I think about the weather? Uh, that's a good question. Well, I think it's untrue that no two snowflakes are the same. I think the snowflakes are just holding their hands in different positions. You know, high fives and peace signs and hitchhikers and fuck yous. Every winter I try to catch as many fuck yous on my tongue as I can. It's the feminist in me. I also think we make too many snowmen and too few snowwomen. If I'd seen more snowwomen growing up, I might have learned how to flood a city every time someone told me to disappear. I might have learned how to load my smile into a slingshot whenever a dude said smiling was something I should do. You're right, man. Here you go. Pew! Where I come from, it got so cold, we made bonfires in the middle of the lake. There'd be this huge fire and we'd be skating around the truth that all of us, like the ice, would one day have to hold that much, the impossible even. My father said not to worry. He said heat rises, but heat rises the same way people do, because it has to. I think the heat would like to rest sometimes, don't you? My mother used to knit my mittens too big so they'd fit me when I grew. I'd wear them and I'd look like what I wasn't yet. I feel that sometimes when I'm writing poems like they don't yet fit. You ever feel the best of you is something you're still trying to grow into. 
I don't consider myself a cold person, but there's that wind chill factor. I think I got it from my grandma. She'd sit in church and she would curse like a witch. You know, witch hunts happen more commonly in cold weather because people look for scapegoats to blame for hardship. I know exactly who I burn for my own failed crop. I used to fall too fast in love a lot. I used to make diamonds out of icicles and promise they would last. My father taught me how to make ice cream out of snow by adding milk and maple syrup. I've eaten more snow than anyone I know. I say that on a first date now. I say, the storm is in me. I say, promise me you'll leave me if your heating bill goes up. When my grandma died, I went home and I made a snow angel on a grave and then I made another so she wouldn't be alone. I've heard loneliness resonates in the same part of the brain as physical pain. One year before Christmas, I visited a men's prison and when I was leaving, the snow started falling on the barbed wire fence and I looked back to see if there were faces watching it from the windows, but there were no windows. That was the same year, 8,962 people in North Dakota laid down on their backs and made snow angels at the same time. If I had been there, I know I would have proposed whoever was beside me, some angel with a smile all her own and the good sense to say, I don't know, maybe. When my father was a kid, he'd walk his sled to the top of a city in a snowstorm and his friends would stand at each intersection below and my father would come flying down the middle of the road and his friends would stop traffic and holler, go, go, go. But enough about me. What do you think about the weather? Do igloos blow your mind? You ever get your tongue stuck on something cold? You forgiven her yet? If I hadn't sold it for its gold, I'd give you the class ring from when I was still a girl and taking good care of my cuticles. If it hadn't burned in a fire, I'd give you the valentine from my first kiss, the boy who grew up to become a preacher and a Canadian, which seems like a contradiction, I'm not sure why. If I knew exactly where to find it, I'd give you the time capsule I buried to open in a million years. I'd shimmy it out of the earth and say, here, I made this for you when I was seven, inside a lock of my dog's hair from before he went to live on a farm for biting the face off of a man who looked at me wrong. If the tooth fairy hadn't come any of those times, I'd give you my smile and say, you're the reason I'm gay, and I mean that the old-fashioned way, as in happy, but also kind of the other way, too. I'd give you my name, but I'd rather have yours, so when the telemarketers call and say, with whom am I speaking, I can say it out loud, the name I was born with, but didn't know until the night I wiped the sweat off your arms on a dance floor in Oakland, then licked the salt from the length of my hands. Do you know how sick a person gets licking the length of their hands in a nightclub? I didn't leave the bathroom for seven days, which is to say, I give you my time, my decades even. Don't tell me to be less dramatic. Of course I've loved before, but I didn't give it my all. Mostly, I gave up. You ask, what makes this different? Why well, I wanna give it a whirl the size of a tornado? Why well, I wanna give it a go at every red light? I just know you make me feel like I could win the lottery with a parking ticket. I see your lipstick on a coffee cup and feel like I have never known a bruise. And I wanna give it my best. I don't want my best to be incredible because people take me serious, but I know I am a joke that you will always get. Your laughter, so holy. The hecklers tell me I'm coming up short and I say, great, now I can win the limbo contest. I wanna give you all my trophies from the county fair where I won the potato sack race and the poetry slam where I was runner up behind a man who read a love poem for pudding. That would be the sweetest gift 
When you're down, I want to give you my best pickup line. What's your sign? Mine has historically been stop, but since meeting you, I've changed it to merge. Darling, when I gave you my heart, I gave my life my word that it would not be the same heart I had given before. I put in like a hundred more doors and a record player from a real record store and I put in a skylight that was all yours. That day, you picked me up and carried me through that airport like my goodbye had no weight. My goodbye has no weight. Right now, you are sleeping beside me, making a face you would not want to know you're making. Call it the opposite of your mirror face. I call it me, bringing home the gold. I call these bed sheets what was sewn from the ribbon at the end of a long race. And I don't want to be anywhere but here, whispering all your nicknames from every hiding place till I give myself away. Hey, galaxy. Hey, Lord of the Butterflies. Hey, Grief Thief. Hey, Wind Chime. Hey, Adorable Sneezer. Hey, Perfect S'mores. Hey, Lifeboat. Hey, Lifeboat. I'm yours. You find me at the coffee shop, at the movies, buying comfort food in the grocery store. You find me on dates, which is terrible, because on dates I really like to appear dateable. You found me at Disneyland, in line for the Little Mermaid slow-moving clam ride. You found me at parties so often, I stopped celebrating my own birthday. You found me on an airplane and in the arms of a medic after the plane stopped on the runway and turned around to let me off. Don't worry, the medic said, it's just a panic attack. As if that would comfort me, to be told I am the enemy, to know my body is its own stalker. Last week you found me on stage, in the middle of a poem, chewed the hairs on the back of my neck, till I couldn't hear the words coming out of my mouth, till I wasn't even there. Do you know how hard it is to read a poem when you're in another state googling sudden onset asthma, or how many bugs are in the human body? Is it possible to be eaten alive while an audience is all eyes asking, are you okay? Are you okay? Are you okay? No. Never, but I am creative. So when I can't breathe, I tell myself it's fine. That's just my heart giving my sternum a high five 50 times a second. After the show, I said to my friend, that was so humiliating. Did I look like a goat giving birth in a mall? Yes, she says, but also like someone who'd fallen through an iced over lake and was screaming to find the hole they fell through to take a breath. I think every good artist makes their audience uncomfortable. I'd hope to do it with my politics and not my body flailing like the about-to-be-dead girl in a teenage horror flick. Not my own spine curling into the claw that strips me down to my day of the week panties and it is always doomsday. If you've never had a panic attack, there's a good chance you've been an ass to someone who has. It makes sense that just relax would feel like a helpful thing to say if oxygen has never been over your head, if your body has never become its own corset. At the restaurant I say I have a small bladder because it's less awkward than saying my parachute didn't open when I left the house and I prefer the privacy of bathroom stalls when falling towards my death at the speed of utter darkness. What pisses me off is that this ever got misnamed weakness. Do you know how much courage it takes to live through this shit? To know the apocalypse is on the other side of the front door and to still reach for the knob to step towards the terror its promised jaw. To scrape your boots on the welcome mat. To tell yourself fear is the seed of fearlessness even while you're falling through the ice that is never than weakness that is the bravest thing I have ever done in my life In something like our mothers we grew, till red was again the color of the water, 
and pain wasn't something any of us could point to, because it was what was. And mourning came, not knowing if it would come again, and love was the only thing assumed, and love should have been enough, someone without a heart might say. The day you died because you wanted to, I tied my wisdom tooth to a doorknob and pulled it loose. Take everything I think I know. Every answer is a grave. Now the questions are the rain I walk through to find my way to God. And my only God is faith that there is comfort here, that who is hurting might hurt less than they did before. What else are all these coins and all these wells for if not to wish the grief asleep in the lap of someone else's grief till grief comes, not knowing if it will come again? Your sister thought the hearse was a limousine till she asked where it was going, and then she knew for sure. That's what a word like heaven will do, but heaven it wasn't what you were aiming for. You didn't think the other side would be better. You thought the other side would be nothing at all. Imagine choosing nothing at all. Imagine something hurting that bad. I didn't still have the ring you'd given me. I'd crushed it with a rock to see how much you loved me. I love you to pieces too. It hurts me in my head now. How you knew the water wasn't deep enough to dive into But I won't let anyone say it was a shallow thing you did I knew it was your entire body finally pointing Saying here, here is where the pain is I can crush a can with the heel of my shoe I can drive by your mother's house if I want to But I don't want to She was there when you bought the ring she knew how long you'd been saving me. I didn't save anything. But you don't lose a person like a set of keys because you don't find them again and you can still get to where you're going. Resilience itself is an awful thing to grieve. Who with the heart can stomach how much we can stomach all your blood in the water and I could still wade through and I will again and I will again and I will again with everyone I lose. So what I want most is to live the rest of my life desperately wanting to live it. I want to give that to you. I want it to find you in the nothing at all. And I want it to be something. When I say I want to make something of my life, that's what I mean. Though I don't remember, I remember my birth was my first yes. Though I was pushed, yes. Though there was screaming, yes. Though the light hurt, yes. I wanted the yes to last forever so badly, later on I told myself, we're built like drums, we couldn't make songs if we'd never been hit. It was a desperate theory. When they told me God was always watching, I said, who wants to worship a diary thief? I didn't dare say who wants to worship anyone who would see everything and just sit there doing nothing while the devil flossed his teeth with the bow of my prettiest violin. Oddly, they told me the same thing about Santa always watching and I didn't mind because that fucker was bringing presents. God was only bringing life, which I was told was a sin to return, even if it didn't fit. My yes never fit into the no of this world. I was just a little girl trying to get rid of the just and the little got rid of the girl instead. Got rid of my yes trying to make a no so big it could go back in time, swallow everything that happened that should not have happened. And that's how I live. I mean, that's how I've been living. Decades of no, 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 and that's okay. 
an accordion couldn't make a song if it had never closed. But then I met you, and I started feeling myself open. I started feeling my yes coming back, and it was the sweetest thing I had ever known, like the reverse of being haunted, like taking a deep breath and pulling the fog off the glass. My love, my yes, do you know how many times a day my gratitude frames your autograph? Come see me in the good light. Come tell me what you tell the truth. Come trouble me. Come lightning strike. Come read out loud what I can't yet pronounce in my own life. Come wiser than the past. Come make me make you proud. Come hope too much. Come with all your ghosts. Come clown around when the timing's bad. Come promise me the world. Come trust me to do my best even when I don't. Come ask me to give you everything I have. Come knowing I'll give you my word that if you fall in the forest when there's no one around, I will be there before you land. Come be everything you are, my love. Come love this world. Come hate it too. Come undone. Come falling apart. Come every age you have ever been. Come tantrum in the grocery store. Come screaming for what's sweet. Come willing to spill. Willing to stain the windows of the angry church. Come nervous brave. Come tender as the trees. Forgiving the books. For asking to be made. Come with all your beauty, leaving evidence behind, your fingerprints all over the thing that changed my mind, that made me better than I was. Come love, make me better than I was. Come teach me a kinder way to say my own name. Come knowing I, like everyone, have had my own blood on my hands. Come help me to a gentler truth. Come share my parachute. Come let me share your storm. Come hush the weatherman when he calls it bad weather. Come light as a feather on the bird that stuck around to see the snow. I used to drive along the coast of Maine, searching for the fog. Come with me to where the sea lifts up into the sky just to slow us down. Come make it count, our finding each other like we found God. Come root for the salt. Come believing we can heal it all, even everything, even everything that has ever been done. I know how much the pain of this world weighs, but I can still tip the scales in light's direction whenever I have your name on my tongue. Whenever you say love is a ladder to our highest selves, I say may our falling be the most beautiful climb. May the rings of the ladder shine on our hands in the good light and in the lightning strike. My love, come become beside me till I find your first silver hair in our tub, till I find your last silver hair in our tub. Come love, come love, come love. One of the biggest perks to look in the way I do is that I virtually never have to listen to someone like you suck your own dick out loud while telling yourself, I am what you're swallowing. How do you not know fail is what you do? Every time you think you can ace manhood with a thesis of, let me get a look at that ass, baby doll. Congratulations on being another dude who got his cat calls at Toys R Us. You unoriginal hand-me-down of mediocrity. You mosquito biting your own balls in a swamp of your mother's regret. Yes, I know it's low to call even assholes names, but any feminist who has ever taken the high road will tell you the high road gets backed up. And sometimes you need to take a detour straight to the belly of uncensored rage. Sometimes you get tired of seeing people's humanity in moments when they are outright refusing to show us their humanity. And so far, all you've shown me is that your voice box is a Rubik's Cube you couldn't get right even if you peeled the fucking stickers off. I don't think you could get all sides clear and why you did not own the air. Or why not everyone takes a bullet as a compliment. And yeah, even a hey baby can spiral like a bullet if aimed at someone who is not in fact your baby. Here's a hint. If women have to play dead to walk by your doorstep, you might want to do some work on why that turns you on. You might want to do some work on why your flinch and startle makes you think you are in charge more than it makes you realize your own power outage. This world is dark. 
with men blowing themselves out. Men bearing their own spines and the weight of what they think is theirs to take, to own, to muzzle, to drag into the ditch. Men who don't get what they want and shout the word bitch across the street like they're two years old throwing a tantrum with their baby diapers on. Like they think their dick is a golden ticket to the Willy Wonka factory and they can't imagine anyone would have an intolerance to, hey, sugar. So they call you a slut or a whore or a dyke. Way to go, you get the last one right. Somebody get him a tote bag. Mm. Somebody get some construction paper and make him a certificate. Somebody get him something quick before he feels inadequate all over a Santa Barbara sorority house before he lines up women like pretty glass bottles and starts shooting off more than his mouth seriously. If you think you are any different than a boy who would write a manifesto to do everything in his power to destroy everything he cannot have, then prove it by being the kind of man who isn't killing time much his own dignity play dead, whose heartbeat doesn't quicken with the quickening of a woman's footsteps, who has enough self-respect to not hang himself out the window of his car. It is not Rubik's Cube hard to keep your mouth shut. Just keep your mouth shut. You can do it, man. I know you can. Thank you. Maybe you suggested something unthinkable, like perhaps I should get my dog groomed after she'd rolled in the poo of a sick horse, and I naturally concluded that you were the absolute worst for thinking I would subject an angel to the horror of being bathed by a blade-toting stranger. Maybe it was when you were editing my book and you said something elitist like, Andrea, you can't end every poem by repeating the last line, or you can't have the word moon or firefly in every piece you write. (laughs) And I screamed something like, I'd rather have a sky without a moon in it than a poem without a moon in it. (laughs) That felt nice. Maybe it was the poly argument. Your face going fire engine red the second I mentioned an old flame. Maybe I decided you didn't want my history to exist, which meant you wanted me to be magic. A virgin rabbit pulled out of your pretty hat or a lady cut in half, and I am not a lady. Maybe it was when you said like six times in a single sentence and I freaked out about our age difference and you said I couldn't argue for my own time-earned wisdom while throwing a three-year-old's tantrum good point. Maybe it was one of the times I got so mad, I defriended you on Facebook, and you got so mad about that, I decided you were the shallow end of the baby pool. Maybe you peed in the water to prove me right. Maybe it was the night at the straight bar when the table of men invited you to sit with them. Maybe it was when you didn't notice their eyes drooling down your breasts. Maybe you thought the karaoke was just bringing them to tears. Maybe I was femme-shaming and calling it having my feelings. Maybe it was when you suggested the bar was queer-friendly because someone had asked if I was Tegan and Sarah. Maybe it was one of those nights when I was two people, neither of them the real me, just caricatures of my worst possible qualities. Maybe it was when we decided to start a podcast discussing all of our arguments, then got into an argument during the first five minutes of recording and canceled the show. But at some point, it hit me. You and I, we are always going to fight for love. I am always going to drag my heart into the ring to call you the knockout I've been waiting for my whole life. You are always going to trigger me into rifling through my history until every ghost is hunted out. Every fight we have ever had been in has been an opportunity to unbruise the past. What hurt would we have forever been hoarding in our garage had we never fought about your inability to park a car because the GPS stops telling you what to do when you pull into a driveway? Please, run over the mailbox. If that keeps me looking for new ways to send my best self to you, I am so in love with who we are, who we have been fighting to become together. I can't believe I finally adore a human as much as I adore my dog. Even when I'm in the doghouse, I like know you like love me like so much. Thank you for telling me there's no need to open our relationship because being with me is already like being with 50 impossible people. Thank you for accepting my friend request for the third time this year. 
Thank you for screaming all the way home from that straight bar to the bed where our bodies made up while the moon flew through the window and a firefly poured into the room. And the firefly landed in your hand, which you opened like a ring box and asked me to marry you. And we were so new, I blushed instead of answered. But a firefly is forever. And you know what my answer is. A firefly is forever. And you know what my answer is. Thank you.